good afternoon everybody how's everybody out here today well i'm gonna go out and try to do a video today i uh, normally don't do these type of videos but uh we're gonna do a uh, video on uh mine disaster that happened back in 1940 in my local area it's called the uh bartley mine disaster it uh, killed 91 people and uh so we're gonna go out today and try to cover a little bit of information on that. And uh, this is a video that's gonna be dedicated to all the miners that's uh, lost their lives due to, to uh, mine disasters or being killed in the mines. And uh, Southern Appalachia, there's been a lot of that happened over the years. So uh, we're gonna go up today and go to the monument. It's got all the names on it go out there to the area that it actually happened so uh, I'm headed toward Bradshaw now I mean, we got a red light here on Route 80 what do you think about that we got a little old spot here must be working oh they're putting a the bridge in it'll show you how long it's been since I've been up this way huh. wow so yeah we'll go out today and check this out Give our respects to to those miners. So we'll catch you when we get up there. We'll be right back with you. So I finally made it up here. We're gonna go over this uh, mine disaster here just in a minute. Uh, first, I wanna let you know I wanna dedicate this all to all the coal miners who lost their lives due to mining accidents or lung disease or whatever due to coal mining. But uh, I'm going to pan around here, let you uh, take a look see. Uh, excuse these old pants here, old dirty pants. I've been out uh, cutting some weeds and stuff here today. Thought I'd stop by real quick and do a video. <clears throat> Folks, I'm uh, sitting up here at Bradshaw at the Miner's Memorial. Uh, statues and stuff. Uh, I hope the uh, traffic's not too loud out here today. I got my maybe a little lapel mic on it might help a little bit. But uh, today we're going to remember the miners, all the miners that was killed back from this day back. Been many of them. And, uh, today I'm just going to do the story on the Bartley Mine disaster, which just a few miles back that way up the road. We'll be going up there here in just a bit to look at the. Uh, historical sign and spot where it happened but uh, it says here on january 10th 1940 the pond creek number one mine at barley at gallup county west virginia exploded blast killed 91 miners with another 47 escaping rescue teams worked five days to retrieve bodies but found no additional miners alive pond creek uh, number one was a deep shaft mine operating in Pocahontas, pocahontas number four scene at a depth of 600 feet. So uh, that was a shaft mine where they'd be brought up and down with an elevator light 600 feet down from the surface. Uh, the miners disaster, the mine disaster came from three months after a local school bus wreck. Wow, 1939, there was a school bus wreck happened toward English. It had a uh, bunch of kids on it, around 70, 74, 74, 75 kids on it. Six perished in the wreck, and the bus driver did also. So that happened in 1939, which was three months before this mine explosion. Wow. It says here, 2.30 p.m., there was 138 men in the mine, when an explosion brought death to 91 of them. The west side of the mine was not affected, and 37 of the men working escaped uninjured. Ten men at the shaft bottom also escaped. The mine forming the other near the bottom of the manway shaft felt a strong rush of air and had a light, uh, sound like a fire siren, dust arrayed in the air. The men from the west section from the shaft bottom were quickly hoisted out. 
that the top op operating officials will hold a safety meeting at the general office nearby. Rescue work was organized at once. Explosion doors of the fan blowed open. These were closed, and a rescue party entered the mine at 3 p.m. They traveled in fresh air to the explosion area, prepared, repaired overcast, extinguished some small fires, and were replacing some of the stoppings with temporary bratis. Bratis is a, like a real strong curtain uh, that they use to put up to, to divert air from out of the face and different places to get air to an area. It's made out of kind of a real thick plastic. Uh, extreme precautions were necessary in this gassy mine. Large falls hindered the work and crews were put to clean them up as they were cleared. Uh, the party returned to the surface after as crews and other rescue men had arrived. This truck piled right here. And the work was uh, resumed that night using apparatus crews, uh, intakes, and rescue personnel. Extreme precautions were necessary in the gassy mine. Large falls hindered the work. The crews were put to clean them up as they as they went on. Wow. The bodies were removed by January the 14th. Men were withdrawn. Permanent ventilation had had to be restored to permit thorough investigation. As the temporary stoppings allowed such leakage that only a section of the time could be ventilated. So they had to get air up there so they could work and make it safe for the rescue personnel. So the investigation from January the 24th to February the 2nd did not find the exact point of origin because the evidence was destroyed by the second explosion. There was another explosion while they were in there uh, an hour or so after the first explosion. The ventilation provided could not prevent the gas accumulation from forming to be pushed out in workplaces by their fall. Wow. It says here the source of ignition was probably an electric arch. The explosion was propagated by coal dust, rock dust, and been applied over a thick accumulation of coal. Oh my my. That's what I was talking about the bus, the bus wreck here just a bit ago. Uh, the community of Bartley was in mourning already when the miners reported from for work at Pocahontas uh, number four scene on October 11th, 1939. The school bus carrying 74 students left the road when the axle suddenly broke and rolled over 85 feet before it landed on Old Fork Western Railroad tracks. Many of the students were from Bartley. The four of the students died called that community home. Wow, so sad. Mm -mm -mm. It says here, one of the workers stated that, that as soon as the workers came up, they told a, a blast that about two miles back in another section, or number six section, some of them, without waiting to notify their families, strapped on oxygen tanks, went on back inside. Man, some of them that come outside turned around and went right back inside with oxygen tanks to help the ones that had fallen. Wow. I was just talking to my cousin here today. He said his dad, he had family that remembered that day. That he had uh, dad worked there, in fact, and said that uh, several of the men had written letters to their families and put them in their hats, in their, in their uh, hard hats. Wow. Something else. says here, as days passed, rescue teams were able to reach the bodies of the miners and temporary morgue was established near the shaft in an effort to bring the bodies up one at a time. Representatives of the State Workers Compensation Commission met with the miners' widows. The Daily Telegraph reported that the widows would receive $30 a month until remarried or died, and the dependent children would receive $5 a month until they reached the age of 16.
that evidence later showed that the most of the miners died instantly, but several were found as if they were seeking safety. They died in darkness. Wow. Said the mine had been checked for methane gas two hours before the explosion, and it was determined to be clear. It was the first explosion at Bartley Number One Mine, and its cause still remains unknown. It says here, actions to promote legislation for the mine safety regulation would be taken days after the explosion. Two miners went to Washington, D.C., seeking congressional support for a federal mine inspection bill according to the uh, Daily Telegraph. Story pu published four days after the tragedy in 1941. Congress empowered a federal mine inspector to, to enter coal mines. The new inspections were, were not the only change that came from Bartley disaster. Well, folks, it's stuff like this, or the new laws, the stuff to make us safe, and the miners safe today. These men here died Cause of stuff that could have been stopped and hadn't learned yet, I guess, back, back at that time, have the dangers of gas. But today, men get to work in the coal mines under a lot more safe conditions because of stuff like this that had happened that caused men to lose their lives. So, uh, you know. Rules and regulations, there's a lot of rules and regulations you have to go by underground. And most of them, rules and regulations, is because a man got severely injured or died because of it. And that changed the way the coal mines work today, which they still are dangerous. They sure are. I worked uh, 14 years underground, 10 years track, and uh, it was a gassy mine. And, uh, but it was nothing like this here. This was much different than them days. But uh, we'll go ahead and clear from here, and then we'll go up to Bartley, and we'll check out the uh, monument there, historical sign, and uh, maybe see if we can see about where the shaft was, where the mine was at. Here are the names that's been put on here since back many years ago, I guess. Uh, I forget what date it was we took this little coal miner up here, though, but I had something to do with that. We hauled him on the back of the ambulance on a gurney to get him here. But check out the names, man, of all the coal miners. Many, many, many names here. Wow, a lot of names for sure. There's even names on the back of these also. All right, let's uh, get ready. We'll head up to uh, Bartley where this all happened. We're here, folks, at the uh, historical sign. It says, Bartley Mine Disaster. Near here in Bartley, number one shaft mine on January 10, 1940, fire explosion killed 91 miners. The names of them, men who lost their lives, are inscribed on the monument erected in the park by the United Mine Workers of America. Wow. We will see if we can go over here and find where this is at. Well, folks, this is the site 
right here where the mine disaster happened in 1940. Here in the mouth of Bartley Hollow. The railroad tracks coming through here. You can see the old remnants of old stone work along the track down through here. This is the big bottom right here. It's this big, where the big uh, shaft mine was in the mouth of this hollow right here. Wow. Well, we'll go up here to the, where they had all the names on the, on the monument to see if we find it in the video right there. Wow, though. You see that old, all that old stonework right there? You can tell this is part of an old mine site back in the day. That old coal, old coal right there. All right, let's go see if we can find this, this monument with these names on it. Show y'all this. This is how they got in and out of here. I guess the coal miners did. Everybody coming in and out of this holler. Instead of going over top of the tracks, they go down through under it, through a little tunnel. And uh, even got a side for the creek. You know, look at all the little fish in that creek. Wow. Wow, well, these old walls could only talk. How old this stuff is. Wow. I've never even been here before. This area, I've been by it, but not been here. Goes through and up in this holler, and I guess the miners went on into the mines up here. This is the only way in and out of here, as far as I know. It's through this tunnel right here. Wow. And this is the main road out here. It's called Route 80. I'm pretty sure it is. I know Route 80 hooks into it. Down here. Yeah, let's go f find this monument up here. Well, folks, I made it here. This is the monument to all the names of the men that lost their lives on that day in 1940. It says here, in honor of the 91 members who lost their lives in Bartley Number One Mine on January 10th, 1940, erected by the members of United Mine Workers of America. A long list of names. Wow, really humbling just to stand here and look at this, even after all these years that this has happened. Folks, I'm glad that you came by today and rode along with me. And uh, we'll do another video. Thanks so much for coming by. And we'll catch you next time on Appalachian Roots with Dan. Catch y'all later.